Day 371 of the Ukrainian War Map, also known as the Russo-Ukrainian War. Juzzy here, and today is another update as I take a simplified and down-to-earth approach to some of the most important happenings on the ground in Ukraine today. And first of all, we'll start off with taking a quick peek at those Russian military losses, where currently Russia is sitting on 149,890 military personnel losses, then taking a quick look at the hardware as well, so 7 tanks, 8 APVs, 10 artillery, and 1 MLRS, which is always good to see Ukraine getting rid of those on the Russian side. Due to the, the largely indiscriminate uh, rocket shelling nature of those things, then we'll move back across the map, where it's really been quite the day, to say the least. And first of all, we'll start out in Russia, where a fire broke out at an oil terminal in Krasnodar Kray. So this is uh, the Russian oblast that touches onto the Crimean Peninsula. And it happened after what was claimed uh, to be two Ukrainian drone strikes. And you might remember this region because it was just late last year when Ukraine sent some of its underwater kamikaze drones this way. So first it was a naval threat uh, that Russia faced here. Now it's also an aerial threat. Then also 300 miles from the Ukrainian border and about 60 miles southwest of the Moscow city center itself. It appears a Ukrainian uh, air drone crashed uh, as well. So this one may have been used for reconnaissance or air defense testing or even a kamikaze drone as it crashed just nearby a gas compressor station. And, you know, the drone specifically appears to be an indigenously produced UJ-22 Ukrainian drone. And I've got to say, that's not all for the day in Russia for Ukrainian drones. Because, again, at least three drones were spotted flying over Russia's Belgorod Oblast before at least one hit a, a depot there as well. So really, for the drone warfare game, it appears the odds are starting to even up a bit. Where Russia is no longer the only long-range drone strike party in town anymore. Which inevitably forces them to have to re-gear themselves into defensive positions. So this is Russia putting itself into a more of a defensive stance, deploying more or as many as they can air defense systems throughout this massive, wide, gaping Russian Federation front line. A good thousand miles, at least really, depending on how you want to count it. And somewhat related, so St. Petersburg in Russia, all the way up the top there, was reported to get a bit uh, unsettled or freaked out. So much so that they stopped taking in flights at their airport due to unknown objects in the sky. Oh, but also check out this uh, <laughs> aircraft in usage here. So two Airbus, one Boeing and one French aircraft as well. And due to all those Western sanctions on Russia for parts, repairs, spares, etc. for the aviation industry... Russia's domestic aviation industry now will undoubtedly face some major operational challenges, not to mention financial challenges as they head into the future, as they fly into the future. Then since we're outside of Ukraine, we'll quickly skip past to uh, Transnistria for a moment, where local authorities in the region have announced a three-month training camp for civilians wishing to serve as peacekeepers from March 1. <laughs> it's a trick. Don't do it, civilians. Well, really, sounds like mobilization to me. Then we move across to the Ukrainian map, and apparently leopards were spotted near the besieged city of Bakhmut. I can't confirm that one as yet, but I, I have something funny at the end of this video that I, I want you to see. <laughs> so we'll move really into the map specifically here. So Bakhmut, that's where it's all happening right now, where it really looks like the weather is starting to 
warm up as the snow liquefies into the trenches. It's an issue for both sides, really, particularly for Russia, who has so many trenches. And this video here, we have a Ukrainian soldier picking up the ammo boxes from the bottom of the flooded trench. But also for Bakhmut at the moment, there's still significant fighting going on uh, along the outskirts there as a, a Russian encirclement campaign is uh, on the cards for Russia. It still continues. That's what they want to do. You can see this push forward from Yahidne there in the last couple of days when I was away. Always something happens when I'm away. But uh, the Ukrainian forces are not ready to pull out yet. In fact, they're reinforcing, adding more troops and hardware. And... Also went as far as to officially announced, uh, announced so far that they're not going anywhere. They are staying put. So we need to keep an eye on this extremely fluid situation here as uh, we'll see whether or not Russia gets that Pyrrhic victory badge that they've truly been gunning for. And as a reminder on that, a Pyrrhic victory is a victory that is won at such a great cost that it is essentially a defeat. Then moving into the Easter bit in the Russian-occupied territory, explosions occurred at a Russian ammunition depot in Kadivka. Now, you might not notice it on this map, but Russia changed the name, so it's this settlement right here. Then moving across in the spirit of ammunition dump explosions, uh, another one uh, occurred in the occupied Kherson Oblast on the left bank or on the south of the the Dnieper, uh, Dnieper River there. And that occurred somewhere, uh, apart, there we go, in the coordinates I've just popped in there. Now, many more of these uh, explosions or depot explosions happen to Russia in any given week, but I tend to only show the ones that uh, have a uh, some sort of corresponding photographic evidence these days. Then we'll move across to some news for the day, always a bit of a shorter video on a Wednesday. So two new German air defense systems named the Skynex are said to be already in Ukraine, as stated by the manufacturer's CEO just today. So it's, it's always really good to hear. Ukraine getting more and more air defense systems, but even better, these are the wildly superior and more modernized successes to the Jepards uh, or the Jepards, the air defense systems that uh, Ukraine's got about 30 of, uh, those Jepards, which we all know and love. Then moving across to a funny or two funnies just to round it off with because it is a shorter video. So the first one is almost like uh, one of those know what you're fighting for memes. Uh, you may have seen those before. So Alina Kabeva, aka Putin's mistress, has been set up in some lavish quarters next to Putin's palace or at least one of his palaces. That's right, folks. This is, in part, what hundreds of thousands of perishing Russian infantry have been fighting for. If only they knew. Also, Alina is also now a retired gymnast, so go figure. And what I'm saying here isn't as tabloidy as you might think. Not at all. She's actually uh, been sanctioned by the US for her close affiliations with Putin. So there you go. Then the final funny to round it all off with, so after the successful elimination of over a thousand HIMARS, the Wagner Group has now made its next daring move, posting to social media that they have taken out none other than their first Leopard tank. But wait a second, something looks a little fishy here. Let's take a closer look. Oh, the research tells a very compelling tale here. So they destroyed the first leopard tank in Ukraine and then somehow teleported it back to Syria in 2018. Wow, such much wonder weapon. Now, I actually love it when Russia or the Wagner Group announces falsehoods such as these because this information inevitably gets sent up the chain militarily or operationally speaking, making Russian generals believe that they are effectively leopard tank killing machines in this case. 
<laughs> Therefore, giving them a truly dirt poor situational awareness on the ground. So thanks for watching, guys. Please leave a comment, subscribe. Thanks for all of the support again. And I do hope to see all of you guys there in the next one. Cheers.